This episode of the Damage Guild podcast is sponsored by listeners like you. Join the guild at patreon.com slash damage guild to receive exclusive perks, member rewards, and bonus content. Previously on the Damage Guild podcast. You finish up your training, Tokus decides to go spend some time at the Alchemist Guild. What brings you here today? I show him the fairy dust. You spend the week guided by Isric's experienced hand. You manage to create your potion of hill giant strength. And Asla has two more charismas. Your chaw is 22. I have. I do have 22 chaws. I'm ready for some travel. Should we, should we do a little travel? I'm ready for the most dangerous vacation of our lives. You arrive at the Merchant's Guild and locate the clerk who can help you purchase a ticket. The runes on the floor begin to glow bright red, filling the room with light before your vision fades to white. You once again feel the unsettling sensation of being hurled through space, this time with many sudden changes in direction, jerking you back and forth. Your feet touch the ground. Welcome to Ristergan, the largest city in all of Maringar. So, about that earring of hearing that we left in the king's castle and he took it back from us. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be really useful. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should have gone back and asked him to borrow it again. Uh, it's true. I don't know that it would have been that easy, but it would be nice to have something like that. We would need a secret mission from him again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Probably. Wait, did we make sure that we checked the... It's, I guess it's too late now that we're in another part of the world. Maybe we should have checked the the job bulletin to see if there were any Merengian quests. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think um, the Sapphire Saber is limited to certain parts of Ilthrod. I would imagine, yeah. yeah. Remember, like, we've gone into other, even other kingdoms in Ilthrod, and they were like, yeah, we have no idea who the Sapphire Saber is. Mm-hmm. We don't recognize. They're not, we're not in their jurisdiction. Yeah, they're based mm-hmm. in Ormog, and they have a few satellite uh, offices. Satellite branches in nearby countries, but that's about it. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. And I do remember, I think we did actually talk about getting the earring of hearing, and we determined that it only lets you he- hear or understand, not speak. So, right. even then, it wouldn't be super helpful. Which is why when Tokus questioned the orc, he kept moving the earring back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which would be awkward to do with strangers we meet. In- <laughs> Let me just right. put this on you. Yeah. <laughs> even though I don't speak your language to you yet. Just hold it right there. Um, so we got nothing. We we got to start searching. Oh yeah, we, yeah, you're right. We, we yeah, got nothing. Yeah. We have to make a gather information check. No, no. I mean, we literally Toka shows you his bag. We we have nothing. <laughs> yeah, but we got a information. We got nothing. Yes, it's true. So we we leave the room wherever this is. You go out the door, walk up a steep set of stairs, and realize you must have been underground somewhere, and you emerge into the middle of a busy street where you're greeted by a cold breeze and a light snowfall that quickly melts as it lands. There must be hundreds of people around you within eyesight, pulling carts, carrying pitchers, riding horses, all busily going about their day. Most of them are human, but you see a number of halflings, dwarves, and elves, and even a few here and there that seem to have some sort of monstrous heritage. None of them pay any particular attention to your group, except for the closest few who try to give Stripey a few extra feet of space when they notice him. Mm-hmm. So we still don't see any gnomes at all? Um, not here. Huh. The cobblestone street is situated on a relatively steep hill, running down to the left and up to the right, with an eclectic collection of buildings lining either side. Most of the structures are three or even four stories tall, often overhanging the street by several feet. You can identify a few shops here and there, and most prominently, an expensive-looking inn located just to the right of where you came out. One other question about the people. Do we notice people wearing uh, weapons? Um, most of them are not armed, but you do see a few. There are a handful of people that have short swords or knives or things like that. Okay, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't outlawed before we, like, go sifting through our satchels and take out our gear. And the guards have halberds and spears and things. Right. You see the guards occasionally here and there. Okay. So the street here is too narrow to see any of the surrounding countryside or any other landmarks in the city, except for a tall tower in the distance to your right that pokes just above the rooftops. Wow. First of all, guys, we did it. We're in Marengar. I I can't believe it. I feel (laughs) a little bit lost, to be honest. A little bit bewildered. Yeah, things are a little different here than back home. 
Well, back home for you guys. Yeah, I notice everybody walking down the left side of the street. That's odd. Yeah. That's the number one rule in all of Marengar. You have to walk on the left. <laughs> that's weird. Yeah. I'm going to have to get used to that. Yeah, if you get caught walking on the right, you could be beheaded. <laughs> pretty, pretty serious. Man. Wow. <laughs> they don't mess around here. <laughs> so, yeah, I uh, forgot to mention that before we came. Don't forget to walk on the left. <laughs> Oh, boy. Um, all right. So we need to gather some information. We need to find out what we can find out about, and I lower my voice and I say about Felmandar's traveling show. Well, if you're speaking to us in Iltharadian, then probably very few people can understand you. That's true, but the enemy has eyes and ears everywhere. Mm, true. But are they Meringian ears and eyes? They are, they are the ears that they need to be. They're multilingual ears and yeah. eyes. <laughs> We look over and we see an ear floating by us. <gasps> look, there's one now. <laughs> no. Perhaps even the ear you wear around your neck has been That's spying on us the no. whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Fell <Felmenta>. no. <laughs> Alright, where would who would know about stuff like traveling shows? So the points of interest that I mentioned, there are several shops and then there's the big inn right next to you. Those are the only things that you see. The rest are houses, as you would guess. Let's hit up the inn. There's probably a, like a equivalent of a job board or like a place where you'd hang up, you know, announcements and flyers and stuff like that. Well, let's go into one of the gift shops. I want to get a, a souvenir of the Marifle Tower. The Marangian Eiffel Tower. Never mind. Forget it. <laughs> souvenir of that tower that you see up on the hill? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Is that, does it look like a like a tower where somebody lives? Or like an like a office headquarters type tower. You can only see the very top of it, so you're not really sure what it is. You, I mean, it might be like the the dungeon. That's what they would call the towers on a castle, the tallest tower. The bathroom. D O N J O N. Yeah, the portable bathroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. You know, Shaba, that's actually not a bad idea. If that's our cover story, that we're tourists, we could actually buy a souvenir or two to put in our what seem to be empty bags. Mm-hmm. Right. And we could specifically not put them into extra dimensional space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Just like in the bag as if it were a normal bag. Not to mention like we might have more checkpoints or other opportunities where we have to essentially get patted down. Yeah. That's true. That's a good point. And like in case in case we don't get amazing rolls like a 32 from Ryan <laughs> it might be good to add some evidence to our story. So maybe we check out the gift shop. Yeah, on the way to the inn, let's go to the gift shop. Yep. Well, the inn's right next door, but you can look around. They don't have gift shops exactly, but you can find some little store, like a craftsman that sells interesting trinkets. Okay. Yeah, like locally made, handmade goods that are like specific to Marengar. This region. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Something that the guards would be like, oh yeah, my daughter has one of those. You bringing that home to your little one? Yeah. Yeah. I would like to get a scale model of that big tower over there. Or just like a little, it's like a little miniature Disney castle, you know? Mm-hmm. Like the whole structure. I don't think they would be selling models of the castle. No. But local goods you can find. I'll get some merengue and salsa. <laughs> Okay, they have a few fruits and vegetables that you're not familiar with. That you don't see back on Elthrod. Oh. All right. That'll last a few days. Well, it rots in my back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't really have preserved foods that you can buy. The local goods that you can find are things like quilts. It tends to get kind of cold here in the winter. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Oh. What about like some wooden dinnerware or bowls or plates or something with like Reistergan on it in Marengia? <laughs> Tourism isn't really a thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was just fishing. That's uh. all. <laughs> well, let's start by buying some, like, nice warm clothing. Because it is... Is it late winter here? It's late winter. Yeah. Let's get some nice, like, fur-lined coats, Ugg boots, and stuff like that. Mm. To keep our, keep us nice and toasty. One of you already has ugly boots. That's true. That's right. That's me. I'll get some colorful woolen leggings. There you go. This is like a pattern. Are they patterned? I'll get one of those hats that has like, it's like a yarn hat and it's got the little poof ball on the top and the two strings that come down the sides. Mm Mm-hmm. I want one of those, too. That's a necessity. Nice. Yep. And then, yeah, just like some little trinkets, like little things, like locally handmade goods to stuff our bags with. Yeah. When in merengue, right? For all the little children we're coming back to. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's just say new set of clothes. Actually, there's prices on that. Look. We'll round up. I'll pay a gold piece for everything. 
It might be more expensive than that to get winter clothing. Yeah, winter clothes, I think, are more expensive. I mean, we want our characters to be comfortable, right? Yeah. Blend in. Blend in. Like, everybody's going to be wearing warm winter wear right mm, now. Right. So we would kind of stick out if we weren't. Yeah. Well, I mean, you've been dressing as warm as you could, but it is a little colder here than most of your time in Elthrod. I think two gold. I'm not actually seeing the winter clothing, but estimating based on the other clothes they have. Okay. Two gold doubloons. Two gold each. Yeah. Okay. Does that include any other little trinkets we're grabbing or... Like, we just want to fill our bags with just random tourist garbage is the plan. Basically. Yeah, exactly. pretty much. Yep. So we want our story to, like, be more convincing next time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just pick some amount to spend. Probably a few silver, maybe a gold or two. I'm going to spend five silver to get that much in touristy stuff. I will just spend an extra gold. All right, so you've got, like, little... Yeah, local pottery or something like that, stamped with the maker's mark from this region. I like it. Cool. All right, I put that in my bag, shake it around. No, I don't want to break it. <laughs> okay, and then you head over to the inn? Yeah. Yes. Aslo, what does that sign say? Uh, it says stop. No, no, the other <laughs> one, the one that's hanging on the inn. Oh, uh, it says this is an inn. Oh, wow. Yeah, it says Bun Raka's House of Sucker. Ooh, oh my. That's what it says. Wow. Should we go there? I feel like that word is something that's going to be lost on our modern day <laughs> listenership. We might want to define Especially it. Especially our younger ones. So it's not sucker as in someone's a sucker or sucker as in a lollipop. Do you, it's do you want to define S U C C O R, right? Yeah. Yes. Mm. Which is like Succor. which is like relaxation and revelry. No, it's like compassionate tending to and healing and relaxation and stuff. It's like yeah, it's a hospitality word. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something right. that is yeah. providing you comfort. Comfort. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yes. So that's that's your word of the day, listener. <laughs> Congratulations, you've unlocked a new talent point in real life. <laughs> so it's like a merengue and massage parlor. I think most of our listeners would probably know that. Right. So what is the name of the guy again? Bar- Ban Raka. B-A-N apostrophe R-A-K-A. Ban Raka's House of Sucker. Okay. The inn is well appointed and clearly receives a lot of business. The hearth is lit, filling the room with a welcome warmth and lighting even the farthest corners. A large tapestry of a castle set atop a mountain range hangs on one wall, and paintings of people you don't recognize decorate the others. And the common room here is... Rather crowded with patrons at the moment. It seems to be about lunchtime. Oh, actually, hold on. How far did you travel? Because there's a time difference. Ooh, jet lag. Oh, Oh. true. (laughs) Pseudo-medieval jet lag for the win. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty darn far is the answer. Yeah. Did we just jump six hours? (laughs) My goodness. The east to west distance is... A thousand miles. No, about 2,200 miles. Ooh. So, like, how far around the planet did we just go? That's pretty far. It matters which way the planet that we're on rotates. (laughs) Same way. (laughs) No, did we go directly... Were we going north or south, or were we going east or west? And what's the size of their sun, and how far away from their sun are we? Right, like, how long is a day (laughs) in our world? And what's the circumference of Crescent? Okay, all of those things are the same as on Earth, except the circumference of the planet could easily be different, but we'll just say it's the same. Comparable. Yeah, so it's basically two hours earlier than when you left. Mm. Oh, okay. oh, that's not so bad. Yeah, it's yeah. not too bad. 2,000 miles is like from here to Utah instantly. There mm. you go. <laughs> <laughs> but unlike flying on a plane, you don't have the time of traveling on the plane. So we actually... Guys, we just traveled back in time. We did? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's amazing. If we just keep leapfrogging around the planet, we'll continue to travel back in time forever. Dude. Yeah. We wouldn't be able to afford that, Chava. <laughs> <laughs> Always thinking with your noggin, Tokus. That's the problem. <laughs> Guys, any mistakes that we've made in our lives, we can just redo by teleporting enough. That's right. Scientifically proven. So people are enjoying their midday meal, and you see there's quite the collection of patrons here. A handful of them are adventurers. There, a lot of them are merchants, and a few of them could potentially be nobility or maybe just really wealthy merchants. The one who seems to be in charge, standing near the counter, is a dwarf. Strong, but clearly past his primes. A little bit tall for a dwarf, a little chubby with a silvered beard set in braids. Oh, excuse me, sir. A couple's massage for four, please. 
couple's <laughs> massage for four. <laughs> we are here to enjoy your succor. I can have my women tend to you, massage your backs, your quite large back. I'm afraid we'll have to charge extra for one of your size. Oh, uh, no problem. <laughs> We've traveled quite a long distance in my back. Wait a second. Is... He can't understand he can't, what you're saying. Yeah, he can't understand <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> um, nobody here speaks common at all. Everybody just speaks Meringuean. Well, common is really just Ilthrodian common. Oh, man. Mm. So. All right. Um, he he actually understands a few words as you're talking, but it, it's not enough to carry a conversation. Okay. Mm. You can see that he catches some of it, though. I say, woman, back, now. <laughs> <laughs> HR violation. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm terribly sorry. Please forgive my, my t- very tall friend here. <laughs> he's, uh, he's not familiar with the customs of this uh, land. <laughs> Where he comes from, he can do that kind of thing. But um, <laughs> what he's asking for is a massage. Give him a pass. Uh, uh, I see. Uh, <laughs> we can certainly do that. Have uh, gold to spend. Oh, yes. Uh, we do, indeed. Big gold. <laughs> <laughs> Much massage. Much spend. <laughs> Big gold. Why is it we always spend all our money on <laughs> useless things? <laughs> 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 and we're like, dang it, we don't have enough money for what we need. <laughs> <laughs> the main story. So you got to splurge every now and then. <laughs> so uh, I, I ask Aslo, so who in this room do you think might know about the, the local show circuit? So first things first, I look around the room to see if there's any type of posting board like that that might have advertisements or flyers for events. There is one small thing near the door. It's not as big and prominent as you might expect in most taverns or inns. It's just kind of a... And it looks like it's not a public posting place either. It's okay. curated news. Okay, so it's just some like small little post about local news or something? Um, you go over, there's a few papers. Yeah, it's like important recent declarations from the Queen. Basic local information. Most of it's not particularly interesting to you. Okay. All right, fair enough. Uh, then the next, the f- first person I would think to talk to would, yeah, be the, the bartender. So I will go up to him and say, um, hi there. Uh, first of all, a um, uh, round of drinks for me and my friends here? Certainly. Rum, ale, wine, beer. Uh, let's do some rum, shall we? I'll have a, a rum and coke for each of us. No, just rum. Okay, just rum. <laughs> Okay, he fills up a mug for each of you, passes them around. Uh, would you care to be seated at one of our tables? Uh, can we just sit here at the bar? This place doesn't have a typical bar. This is like a nice, fine dining establishment. Mm, upscale, okay. You can get a booth or a table. I say that we'll, we will grab a, a table. Um, I'll tell the other two, I'll tell Tokus and Shaba, uh, why don't you two go over there and grab a, a table while I talk to this fine man here? Uh, sure. That can be arranged. Okay. He just doesn't want us around, Shaba. I whisper. Yeah. We're just getting in the way. We can. We don't speak the language. Yeah, we're third wheels around <laughs> here in this country. Yeah. As well as, like, the, uh, the unicycle of our party, and we're just extra wheels that are not needed. <laughs> uh, we're needed <laughs> if and when we get robbed or attacked, or both. Right. Yep. That's true. Then the wheels come down. Unicycle with training wheels. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. We're only needed when we're needed. I mean, of all the characters to be the linchpin of our conversation, he's definitely the one to be that. Yeah. So it works out. It does. Yeah, I say, so uh, So listen, my friends and I here are, are travelers. We are, this is our first time in town. Uh, we are here to see the sights and enjoy the local events and things like that. What's the, uh, what's the scuttlebutt in town lately? What, what uh, events are going on around here? Festivals, carnivals, concerts. Mm-hmm. Group hugs. <laughs> Flash mobs. <laughs> oh, well, welcome to Reistergon. We see quite a number of visitors constantly. The most notable event coming up is Armandor's Week mm. next week. Oh, is that like Shark Week? <laughs> Armandor is the god of life and death. Oh, oh so okay. yeah, like Shark Week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have any religion knowledge at all? I could uh, make a religion check, <laughs> hypothetically. Tokus could, too. It's an int skill. That would be an eight. Okay, so you are aware of it. You don't know any of the specifics or how it might be celebrated or recognized here. Okay. But you know it has something to do with, like, rights for the passing on of the dead 
and something like that. Okay. But you don't know. It's like their Dia del Muertos. Mm. Something like that. Okay. Seriously, though, Tokus, don't you have, like, a good religion check? I mean, I'm not part of the conversation. Oh, yeah. But if he relayed that to me, I totally would make that check and be decent at it. Mm. It's true. Bunraka says that you know, we don't typically see too many visitors coming in for that, but that's the biggest event that I can think of. Most of the city will participate in some way or other. Okay. In fact, you might even be able to see some decorations hanging from windows if you looked around. I thought I did notice some as I as we walked in, actually. What about uh, my my tall friend over there is quite the um, quite the music head. What about music events? Have you heard of anything around here? I mean, we have performers come and play at our inn regularly. I'm a fishmonger. Isn't that what you call someone who follows the band Fish around? <laughs> There's a lot of people who do that. You specifically follow fish? Yeah, like yeah. you just follow them around the country on tour, just going wow. to every single one of their shows. Man, I've heard of people, yeah, who do that, who just like travel really far to go to keep going to the same band's concerts over and over again. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Seems like a waste of time to me, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> How do the fishmongers feel, Thane? <laughs> yeah, those fishmongers could be listening to our podcast right now. They might be yeah, some of our yeah, biggest exactly. fans because they keep coming back Sorry. to hear us again and again. <laughs> <laughs> but what were you saying? Our listenership is going to plummet to zero because all of our fans were fishmongers. <laughs> I was just watching a Premier League game where they said that the away visitors came, like, they traveled 500 miles on a Thursday night to watch a soccer game. Wow. Yeah. Diehard fans. So, yes, there's various musical performances. Most of them take place in the inns and taverns. I'm not aware of any particularly exciting or large ones coming up, but you could easily find musicians anywhere you decided to look. We'll have one playing tonight, I believe, starting in a few hours. Do you know the name of this group? Skelumver. Skelumver. Wow. S K E L apostrophe U M V E R. Who better to know what acts are going on than a performer? Exactly. Brian just pointed at me and winked. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are. Uh, we're we're on the same wavelength there. I say. Uh, and what time do they perform? He'll be arriving in a couple of hours and start his performance shortly after that. Once he gets set up. Great. We are, we're hoping to uh, experience everything that Racer Gone has to offer. Many thanks for the, uh, the updates. We'll be enjoying our drinks over at our table. All right. So you're going to pay another gold or whatever for your drinks and gold for Shabba's massage if he wants to get one? Yep. yep. <laughs> a gold each for our drinks or gold out of party gold for our drinks? Uh, for the whole set. Well, actually, no. This place is nice. So we'll say it's eight silver for each of you for your alcohol. Eight silver each, okay. Over the next couple of hours. All right. Yeah, I mean, Shaba, you might as well get that massage since we're not contributing to the conversation. <laughs> yeah, right. Might as well spend my time constructively. And I'll just sit here and stuff my face across the table from Stripey and we'll exchange angry looks. <laughs> the problem is, if Stripey and I are the only ones at the table eating together, is neither of us will pass the salt. <laughs> But I wouldn't use salt anyway, so... Yeah, I was going to say, you wouldn't be like a plane. So that actually works. You would just take it so that he can't. Yeah, I don't pass <laughs> it to him, exactly. I make sure that all the spices are on my side of the table. <laughs> all right, so Shava goes off into some side room, and an elven woman massages your back for like half an hour. Ugh. Feel great. Very relaxed. Feel like your muscles are just puddles. All right. <laughs> Nothing takes the stress of travel away like a good massage. <laughs> Ah, I feel rejuvenated. I assume that we'd also get some food, too, if we haven't eaten recently. Does the one gold for the massage include a tip, or is that just the base price? <laughs> That's just your price because you're particularly large. More real estate to cover. It's like massaging rock. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I will tip her another gold. And then food as well. Uh, we have three gold in party funds. Should I just pay three to get whatever that'll buy for a meal? Sure. That's just a little bit more than the drink. So yeah, whatever. Spend your three gold. You have some food and drinks for the next couple of hours while you're waiting. Excellent. All right. I deducted three gold. One for the massage, one for the tip, and then another gold for just food and drink and whatever. Okay. So should I get the gold, the one gold back? Yes, because I paid for our meals out of party gold. All right. Awesome. Business expenses. See, this is a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I come right back to the table after I have this conversation with the bartender, with Banraka, and I um, I guess Shaba is already getting his massage, but I fill Tokus in anyway and mention the name Armandor. 
Have you heard of it? Hmm. Like a religion check. Armandor. Yes. I have. Oh, this number. 18. He's showing us. Plus. Uh, I have a plus four to intelligence. So, yeah, you're familiar with it. You're not sure exactly how they would handle it in this country, but there are similar holidays in Ilthrod as well. It's a time where people gather to mourn the loss of those who have died in the last year since the previous week of Armandor. And the high priests will perform rituals that are supposed to allow their spirits to pass on to their ultimate destinations, wherever that may be. Hmm. So it's time of sort of mourning, but more also reflection on the people that have gone. Hmm. What's the name of this god again? Armandor. 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 When I hear that, I think dwarvish. Mm -hmm. Armandor. Yes. But it's probably not related at all. Probably not. Not particularly dwarvish. No. Most of the gods in this campaign setting, this world, are worshipped by all of the main races. Okay. No, yeah, no division in that way, yeah. I mean, they do have tendencies, like the dwarves favor and bestial for protection and strength, but not exclusive or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got a running list of all the gods that we've encountered so far in the game. Kavaki... Aldona, god of travelers. Neros, the god of fate. Embastil, the god of protection and strength. Iato, god of commerce. Aracel, goddess of nature and healing. And Armandor, god of life and death. Sweet. You just had that at your fingertips? No, in my <laughs> notes. I have a show notes. Google Docs of notes from the campaign. Mm. Nice. Then I also fill Tokus in on a musician who's going to be stopping by and playing at the inn in a couple of hours. Skalumver. Hmm. Oh. How best to catch an act than to see an act. Ah, exactly. I didn't think to ask what genre he is. Uh, if he's polka, then I'm probably not going to stay. I'm just going to walk away. <laughs> well, surely we'll walk back so we can ask him. Like, yeah. You know, are there any shows that are better than your show that we can go and see? <laughs> 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 like, how do we pop that question of like, oh, like, I really liked your show. Can you tell us about other shows? <laughs> You're going to have to smooth that over. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, cover, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So the three or four of you spend your time at the inn, relaxing, enjoying your food and drink. And eventually, you know, as it starts to get towards the evening, you do see a half-elf come in, carrying a case, from which he pulls out a lyre, uh. which is a small harp-like instrument. Nice. And he starts setting up a, on a small stage at the end of the room. Did you want to talk to him? I shout, you filthy liar! <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he just, it's clean. He washed it. Oh, okay. It's actually quite a clean liar. Oh, good. That's a relief. Did you want to talk to him while he's setting up, or are you going to wait till after the performance? Or? We'll harass him, but in a language he doesn't fully understand. <laughs> exactly. That was my thought, Tokus, is that if I can shout insults and uh, harangue him, then he will have no idea, and he might think I'm even cheering him on. Yeah, as a traveling musician, I know better than to uh, try to talk to the person while they're setting up, because they've got enough on their mind. So <laughs> I'm just going to let him do his thing, and uh, we'll talk to him afterwards, or maybe during the intermission. Okay. He gets ready, and it seems like he's waiting a little while before getting started, like waiting for the crowds to actually come in for dinner. You might have some time to talk to him before that, but you're not sure when he's going to start playing. Mm. Eventually he does start to sing. He's singing and playing, and he you know, calls the crowd's attention. And da da dee da dee da dee. Hurdy squirty whips could be squeeby dooby do. Whatever Marangian does. It's the Swedish chef from Columbus. Yeah. Hurdy squirty flooby. Hey, it's all Greek to me. <laughs> and he sings several songs, some rather boisterous tunes to start with, just get the crowd excited and warmed up. I call this next tune, The Ballad of Aslodius the Great. <laughs> and then he drops it down low, keeps it real smooth for a couple tunes. <laughs> and it's like a 15 minute long ballad, <laughs> chronicling the life and adventures of Aslo until that fateful day. And in the final verse, he travels, he teleports back to Merengar, and settles down into a little inn. No, in the final verse, he disappears never to be seen or heard from again. Mm. And so the legend continues. Mm. After he <laughs> threw that knife right through her heart. <laughs> That's right. And stole it into the afterlife. So after a while, when the crowds have had enough of the upbeat tunes, he switches over to the epic of Emperor Zytasta 
the last emperor. Ah. And so he relates his many grand adventures and things that he did for the country and so on and so forth. It's all stuff that Aslo is intimately familiar with. You've probably delivered this exact same thing in your own performances. That's right. This goes on for a good 40 or 50 minutes before he decides to take a break and say that you know, the story will be continued in half an hour once he's had time to sit down and rest his throat. Nice. Huh. The intermission might be a good chance to talk with him, Aslo. To chat him up, yeah. He's got a set under his belt. He's got the nerves shaking off a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. He seems like an excellent performer. His music was lovely. His singing was great. He's telling all the stories without mm. flubbing any of the words or anything. Wow. Nice. So the epic of Emperor Zytasta went on for 40 or 50 minutes? Yeah, just that one part. Wow, goodness gracious. Holy shnikes. That is a long one. You know, maybe Tokus is also going to go get a massage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? He's bored. That's like an album-length song. <laughs> Good night. Well, I mean, it's like Homer with his epics and stuff. You know, the Odyssey. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Epic poem. Just yeah. put it to song. I'm actually writing an epic poem right now. Really? Yeah. In, in real life? Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought I just pictured Shaba just sitting there with a pen and paper writing right at the table. <laughs> yeah, like the Odyssey. No, I just got to thinking, we're, we've been reading a lot of Dr. Seuss books, my son and I, and I got to thinking, what if Dr. Seuss wrote entire, like, adventures that all, like, had rhyme schemes? And so I'm just experimenting with having to tell a narrative that rhymes. It's more like mm. Shakespeare. Yeah. Mm. At least some of his work. True. Right. Anyway, off topic. So I will uh, brush the crumbs off of my tunic and say to the other guys, all right, I'm going to go try and uh, chat this guy up. You guys keep doing your thing. All right. Yeah, knock him dead and I give Aslo a nice knock over the back and forget my own strength. With some gnomish <laughs> inspiration. That's right. All right. I got my fingers crossed for you. So I, uh, I sidle up to Skellumber, approach him if he's not talking to anybody else. Not at the moment. He's sitting down getting ready to eat, but not quite started yet. Okay. He looks up to you and says, well, he looks over to you because you're he at the same height while me. he's sitting, roughly. <laughs> Greetings, my little friend. How can I help you? Oh, there. I um, just wanted to come over and say hi. Have you have you already gotten a drink? Let me let me buy you a round. Why, thank you. It's always appreciated. Yeah, so I'll get whatever his favorite bevy is. He gets the nice 30-year-old wine. Oh, my. Uh, how much is that going to set me back? <laughs> <laughs> how, does, how does the water sound? Do you like water? <laughs> You must be rather parched after that epic. Yeah. It'll be like six gold for a glass for him. Ooh. Wow. Good gracious. Wow. wow. But we we want the information, right? <laughs> yeah. As I mean, well, <laughs> swallows hard and pennies up. How much are you willing to pay for clues as to Felmendar's whereabouts? So, he says, <clears throat> well, um... So, I, so I'm uh, familiar with uh, a lot of the this music, and you're really nailing it up there. The epic of Emperor Zytasta, I mean, that's a classic. You're you're uh, telling every detail just right. Zytastar. Oh, Zytastar. Zytastar. It's like the stairway to heaven of emperor ballads. Exactly. Why, thank you, young <laughs> sir. It is always nice to see one appreciative of the musical arts. Yes, I'm a, I'm a big big music fan myself. Do you have your instrument anywhere out or like in your pack that like you could see it somewhere? I don't think we've even unpacked our armor and weapons yet. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's been a few hours, so you could have if you wanted. I would say we, at this point, we probably would have just so that we're armed and armored in case something goes down. Yeah, we did observe that it appears to be no legal issue with being armed and armored. Yeah, as far as we know, right? Right, to carry. Yeah. I mean, if we can say we've had time to do so, then sure. Yeah, I think we'd have arms and armor, but um, I don't think I would have my, my any of my instruments visible at this point. I'm just a, just a fan more than anything. So I say, my friends and I are new to town here. We're, uh, we're loving your show. We're wondering if there's other big acts uh, traveling around the area, if you've heard of anyone. I walk over and hand you Mekalola. <laughs> Because it seems like maybe you'd want to bond with this guy over your mutual <laughs> skills in music. I uh, say, I'm I'm sorry, do I know you? And I hand the guitar back. <laughs> I take, I take back. the hint and leave. <laughs> and you say that in Merengian, so... <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, there are always many traveling performers in this city. The crowds here never cease. You can always find an audience. And many come to do just that. Of course, I would say that you've already found the best, but 
<laughs> Perhaps there is another you are looking for? Another experience you wish to find? Yeah, it does. It certainly does seem that I've found the best that there is. But, uh, you know, a music lover like me, it's hard to keep my appetite satiated. So um, I've heard of, of some others. Um, let's see, what was the name? Uh, like I said, I'm new to town, but uh, Film something? Filmery? Film? Uh, could you perhaps be... It must be. Filmindar the Fantastic. Oh, yeah, that was it. That was the one. How could you not know his name? Everyone <laughs> knows his name. It slipped my mind for a moment. Yes, yes. I recall seeing his performance once. It was likely two, three years ago at this point. It has been quite some time since he last visited this city, to my knowledge. So uh, you likely won't be finding him here. Hmm. Do you know where I might find him? Oh, I believe he tends to stay in the south, the southern countries. He runs a circuit performing for various nobility and other wealthy patrons. You might have better luck if you looked for him in Ransdale. Ransdale. It's only a few days away on foot, or mm, one day probably, if you took the ferry down the river. Hmm. You might be able to learn about his schedule if you found some of his clients to speak with. Clients as in uh, nob nobility that he's performed for recently? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. His performance was indeed fantastic. Was it really now? It wasn't just him. He has an entire entourage performing music and poetry and feats of daring and agility. He had those who walked on fire, crossed gaps on thin ropes... Those who tamed vicious beasts, all sorts of shows to entertain the masses. Wow, quite the variety act, huh? Indeed. Did he have any, um, I don't know, say, beautiful assistants, perhaps? I do recall there was a fair elven maid that helped him during his magic act. Hmm. Well, he certainly doesn't seem, doesn't sound like any, uh, any skelumber or anything, but uh, perhaps I would like to see this show that you say is so fantastic. Well, I, I would not wish to stop you, for it is indeed a sight to behold. I am loath to admit it, but he does offer more with his group than I am able to put on alone. Hmm. At this point, he gets his food delivered, and Skullumber starts to eat slowly as he's finishing yeah. up his conversation. But it looks like he wants to get to his food and get ready to perform again. Okay. I'll uh, say numbers are not as uh, important as talent. Wouldn't you say? And I kind of give him a, a little elbow. True. Quality over quantity. Yes, exactly. That's what my grandpappy used to say. <laughs> Anywho, I'll let you get back to your food. Nice chatting with you. I'm looking forward to the rest of your set. Thank you. Thank you for the drink. Indeed. He holds his glass up as a, sort of a toast to you. I give him Nux, and then I turn and walk away. Sean is making questioning gestures. <laughs> I go back to the table. Well, are you going to ask him where it's happening or when the next Felmendar show is? He's, he's, he didn't know. He told us where to look. Oh, yeah. man. Six gold for that. He, said, he told us <laughs> he where to look. look in Ran Ransdell, we yeah. can take the ferry down the river. Ransdell to the south, take the ferry down the river. We'll get us there in a day. And we'll get more information there. And then we can ask uh, his clientele in that area what his circuit is when he plans to be around. Yeah. Okay, I guess I guess not a waste of six gold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this guy is clearly not a fishmonger for Felmendar. No. He uh, just kind of knows of him. He's, he's beaten to the sound of his own drum. Right. Mm-hmm. And we listen to the rest of his set. Yeah, he goes through the rest of the night. He tells more of the epic poem. In all, that part runs about two hours, and it's getting late in the evening before he finally finishes up and guests start drifting off to bed. You have not paid for a room at this point. We have not. No, but we shall. Cheapest rooms they've had, they would have here would be eight silver a night. It goes up from there. Sounds good to me. Okay. A bit steep, but it's a nice place. So. It's considered comfortable accommodations. Yeah. So that's per person, right? Yeah. Well, per room. If we want... Or we want separate rooms, right? Do you guys want to shackle up together? Uh, I would say to save money, clearly we should have a sleepover, Tokus. <laughs> <laughs> and because right. Shaba loves sleepovers. <laughs> I mean, I'll never turn down a good sleepover. <laughs> Sounds good. So how how are we going to divvy that up? Can party gold pay for that or... Nope. You're out of party gold. All right. Uh, I will pay three of it. And I will pay three. I will pay three. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> but it's eight. 
definitely costs eight. The extra one is a tip. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Tip for leaving fur on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and droppings. <laughs> Wait, surely Shaba has a system for stripey. Like when we have stripey indoors, like you've got to have like those bags that go over your hand, and then you pick up the poop and then <laughs> dog bags. He has a portable litter box. Yeah, you've got to have something. He's taught him to use the chamber pot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he goes in the satchel. <laughs> <laughs> oh no Mernie don't go digging around in there <laughs> That's precisely why he goes in the satchel <laughs> But like what Where did Stripey go before we had the interdimensional satchel Just you know Wherever <laughs> Wherever it was convenient <laughs> He's tra- he's well trained You don't have to worry about that I take him out for walks in the middle of the night While you guys are sleeping Oh no wait I have the dawn watch So I take him out as soon as I wake up At like 2 in the morning or whatever it is mm-hmm. Yeah he's good all right, so then we uh, bed down for the night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Next day comes. What's your plan? You're gonna immediately head out of town and try to find the ferry. Um. Do we have everything we need here? Yeah, I think so. I think we should follow that lead mm-hmm. that we paid valuable money for. Yes, <laughs> it's true. You guys still have plenty of cash. Yeah, six gold <laughs> is not that much to pay for a lead. I feel like we've been doing like a lot of funds building up until this adventure. And, like, this has to be the record high for how much we've spent ever oh, in yeah. the show. Oh, like, yeah, even definitely. proportional. I think the only thing that comes close is when we went for plate mail for Tokus. Mm. Overall, that might have been, like, our highest, like, like overall percentage of money thrust into one thing. Mm-hmm. That was such a steep teleport. Yeah. Even with all the benefits of the interdimensional satcheling and everything. That's why the guy at customs was questioning us so hard about it. Because he was like, you really paid all that gold just to come here for vacation? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you had a ridiculous role. <laughs> <laughs> critical, a critical bar. Critical success plus twelve. <laughs> <laughs> it's just nuts. So I think then we are ready to find the ferry and leave. The only thing I thought about would be trying to find like a magic item that would help you guys be able to speak and understand Merengian. But I'm guessing that would be very rare, hard to find, and expensive. Probably. Yeah. I mean. This is the biggest city, at least on the continent, if not the world. So you'd have a higher chance of finding it here than pretty much anywhere else. But there's a lot of ground to search. Okay. How about like a, uh, a like a book? Like if you spent weeks here, you might be able to find something. Mm. I, I think I think you're on the right train of thought, Jay. Yeah. How about like a book that can te- help teach us the language quicker? They would probably have the reverse, how to learn our language from Merengian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We'd have to like reverse engineer the book. You could probably find something like that to help, but, I mean, you can't just pick up a language in a few days or weeks. Well, of course. Mm -hmm. But, you know, at least having a reference, like a dictionary or something. Yeah, so skills in D&D, it's a hundred days, right? Like to learn a new skill in Dungeons and Dragons? Is it a hundred or two hundred? I don't remember. It's longer than a week. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, I just remember a (laughs) hundred days being something that stuck out to me. So I, I get that Thane's trying to enforce something like that. Yeah, but something to basically speed the process up a little bit, make it so that you guys are able to at least carry on like very basic conversations. Yeah. You could just translate for us. Yeah. I guess for some reason I was uh, assuming that it would be like like they were Australian or English. Like when we first met Aslo, he spoke with a different dialect. And so I thought that everybody in Marengar was just like an Australian. They spoke the same language, but just in a different way. Now, Aslo has an accent that he speaks with Yeah, constantly. that's what I'm saying, like an accent or a dialect. But it's it's a foreign language accent. No, well, he speaks merengue and common, like they're separate right. languages in this world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I guess at Bard's College, you took <laughs> Ilthradian 301 and mastered the language. <laughs> he also lived there for several months at least, if not years. Yeah. In Inept. Oh, you had been there for years before you started this business? Uh, I think it was months. Okay. Jay, this is a good thing. If if Brian is translating for us, then it's not our bad charisma scores. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, by default, it makes him the, the key communicator. I don't think this is a bad thing. This might actually be a net gain for us. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. When it comes to social interaction, certainly. I mean, no, but seriously, could, couldn't we do something like that as long as the patron is willing to 
have a translated conversation slash you know Aslo is okay with doing that I think I think that Jay and I could still maybe communicate through that means but why say what we can say when Aslo could just say it for us exactly me too can still talk as long as you agree that he's going to be translating for you and Hmm. being the face of it but I mean he's been splitting off from the group to talk to people so far so yeah we can't we can't really conversate when we can't understand what anybody else is saying yeah so I think if we establish it that way that I will just translate and that's sort of the understood thing then that way you guys can actually interact with NPCs. Right, it's just we can't interact with anyone outside of Brian. Mm-hmm. That's what that would mean. That's the limitation. Right. Right, yes. Language is important. It's like a really amazing thing when you think about it. It is. Yeah, I mean, in game terms, it's just, just a matter of as I saying, all right, I let you guys know what they said and so forth. Yeah. Well, as long as it's understood by our listeners that that's what's happening, I think it's fine to shortcut some of that. Yeah. But bringing it up, obviously, as it's important. Like, they might have questions for us, like, why are you foreign? Why are you translating for them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was very weird when I had the experience of being in that foreign language speaking group when I went to Japan and with some friends. Like, we're all speaking English. Everyone else is speaking Japanese. But, you know, they all see us as the weird people speaking this other language. Yeah, right. (laughs) Like, I've been on vacation in, like, various places and, like, been at the beach and heard people speaking in whatever it was, like, German or something else and I was like oh okay they just look like anybody else but then all of a sudden they're speaking a different language or you overhear them it was probably a lot more common in america than in most other countries i would think Hmm. because we get so many foreigners Hmm. just all the time anyway especially certain languages like spanish is everywhere right Mm -hmm. so you head out of town we hit the ferry wow i didn't know we were gonna get to ride ferries yeah dude a real live ferry restock your ferry dust (laughs) <laughs> yeah, don't show them the fairy dust. They they wouldn't take kindly to their kind being ground into <laughs> tiny molecules. <laughs> That's true. So you make your way out of town. <laughs> let's mount those fairies. Let's get, <laughs> let's get in the air, guys. The ferry is situated about a mile from the edge of town at the river. And so you head down the hill. And once you get a decent ways outside of town, you can look back and see how big this city actually is. It's probably about three or four miles across. Whoa. Wow. And walled in, the whole thing. That's a big city. Wow, walled in. Dang. The whole city is built on a large hill with the castle and the main towers and stuff at the top. And that's what you would have seen looking up from your street. Mm, nice. And you see various other prominent buildings that are 10 to 15 stories, like massive temples or something similar. It's by far the biggest and most impressive city you've ever seen. Yeah, it is. Aslo has actually been here before. Hmm. You've performed here sometimes. Just like I remember it. You arrive at the ferry, and you can pay for passage down the river just to get to Ransdell, which is the whole country, rather large one, will be a day. They can also take you either farther west or farther south along the river, because it splits once you hit the border of Ransdell. Mm. If you would like to continue going on the ferry, you can book additional passage. You heard previously from your deal with Blackblade that Thomondar tends to be in Ransdell, Porin, and Teve. Teve is the country where you are most wanted. So moving south down the river seems the, the way to go. Yeah, I agree. Right, we want to make pit stops in all the places where he would want to play. Mm-hmm. We'll track him down. We can find out when, if he's planned, if it's planned for him to come there, or when was the last time he was there. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you talk to the ferryman. He says uh, the closest major city he could get you to would be uh, Merivir. That'll take about three days going west and south. It's slower going south because that's upriver. What power is this ferry? Dreams, obviously. <laughs> what, kind, what kind of ferry is it? It's actually more like a barge thing, so it's pulled along by horses on the shore when it needs to go upriver. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. It's got a rudimentary com- combustion engine that runs on unicorn dung. <laughs> Dude, this thing has serious <laughs> horsepower. I don't know if you know it. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and total cost. Oh, no. <laughs> 5,000 gold. We need to do some earning on this <laughs> mission. Seriously. At some point. We need to kill some bad guys and take their stuff. <laughs> I mean, we were in the largest city in the whole continent. We should have found their Adventurer's Guild and joined that one, too. Yeah. Taking a couple side quests to fund our journey. Right. Actually, you know, Jay, 
before we get on this boat, there is maybe no better place in the world than this massive city to sell one. Just, just, just one. I'm not saying sell them all. To sell one of the wines. We already sold one of the wine, Tokus. We did because you felt like it was the right thing to do. And I'm saying I think that time has come yet again. So you think I'm going to sell my wine to fund your <laughs> gallivanting across this continent? <laughs> so you wouldn't have that wine if you weren't part of this team. And you point to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't have that armor if you weren't part of this team. That's very true. Like, I think, I think Asla wrote it into the contract that if I quit, like, he gets to keep the armor or something. I mean, it's, it's really <laughs> messed up. <laughs> I think that being that we are an adventuring party, we should do what we do best, an adventure. And find some evil things to slay and be rewarded for. Are we, like, running low on cash? Not at all. Not one bit. No, I'm okay. Okay, then let's uh, carry on with the plan then, (laughs) shall we? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I think Tokus is just concerned about the amount of money that we're spending. Hmm. This we have shelled out this episode. It's true. My goodness. Trust me, no one knows that more than me, Tokus. But you have to. You got to spend money to make money. That's the old saying. Yeah, I've spent more money in the last 24 hours than I've ever owned in my life. (laughs) There is no money at the end of this adventure for us. We're killing, and I lower my voice just in case that somebody here can... Dude, (laughs) Felmandar is a traveling, like, he's on tour 24-7. He, the dude's gotta be wealthy. He's gotta be raking it in. You don't think he's got a little, uh, little something-something? So this isn't really a revenge store anymore? We're killing him because he's a celebrity? No, we're not killing him (laughs) because he's a celebrity. I'm just saying (laughs) there's an uh, ancillary effect of killing a rich person is that they're rich and they're no longer alive. (laughs) <laughs> so what happens when that happens? What happens when adventurers kill people with money that are no longer around? They make that money their own. That's what we do. That's right. The Damage Guild does not endorse killing rich people to take their money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That goes with that saying. Or maybe not. Maybe there needs to be a disclaimer. <laughs> Neither the podcast nor the adventuring group. Yeah. <laughs> you, right. you drive a good point, Shaba. Besides, Tokus... Revenge is the sweetest money of them all, isn't it? <laughs> so then we're going to donate the rest to, like, Merengi and orphanages? No! <laughs> These two things are mutually exclusive. We're killing somebody for revenge, but he happens to be rich. One can be possible without the other, right? We would kill Felmadar even if he was a penniless beggar on the street because he's a bad person and he stole Aslo's <laughs> life. But it just so happens that our benefit is... That he's got a lot of money. So now we're killing beggars? I thought that this mission was to clear Aslo's name. Yeah. And, like, make it so that... Well, well, hold on. Like, if Felmandar is dead, how do we do that? Well, we, we clear his name first, and then we kill Felmandar. Yeah, this, this mission just is a whole lot more complicated than, oh, just kill Felmandar. Of course. Like, if yeah. we're trying to clear his name, we have to get into, like, the court system somehow. <laughs> we got to find <laughs> evidence. Yeah, we should probably be planning all this as we're floating down the river on this barge. Probably. You need a good lawyer that's actually going to want to, <laughs> like... Yeah, there's a lot more to this, I'm realizing. Than Clearly, we just have to do it like they always do in the movies. We have to have a little tape recorder in our pocket and mm. press record and then have a conversation and get him to admit that he was the one who sabotaged Aslo, and then we just play it for the authorities and we're good to go. Exactly. Is there a spell that does something like that in D&D? That's a great point, actually. Hmm. I wonder if there's a magical equivalent. Like we could like save the memory and put it into somebody else's head? Yeah, the, the closest thing I know of is the... Ooh, we need a pensive. The cantrip that basically is a pensive, yeah. Which one? There's some cantrip that was in an expansion book. A cantrip does that? What? Really? I was going to say, what level do you have to be to design your own spell to create your own magic in this game? How can a character discreetly record a conversation for later? Look at that, Tokus. You let us down a whole rabbit hole now. <laughs> but but we needed to. Yeah, no, you're it's right. not as simple as you just call Felmandar. That, right. You brought it to mind. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah, we can't just kill him. We have to get the evidence first, because he's the only one who knows if he tampered. Yeah, there's a cantrip from Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica in Code Thoughts. So you can pull a memory from your head. What? Mm. You can pull a memory from someone else's head? Uh, no, it's only from your head. Huh. Oh, wait. 
Now, if you also have detect thoughts or something that lets you read someone else's thoughts, then you can pull it out of their head. <gasps> oh, dude. Oh, <laughs> well now. Wow. Okay. So we don't kill him necessarily. We Well, we do, we kill him after, but <laughs> first <laughs> we get the evidence. So we have to somehow get that cantrip and detect thoughts before we fight him. Yeah, about that. <laughs> You might be able to find a scroll with the cantrip in town. Yeah. Could we do scrolls of, of both of those things? Yeah, I was going to say, which of us, who of, who here knows Detect Thoughts? Nope. Not I. Uh, Detect Thoughts. Actually, the crown can cast it for two charges. Oh! Dude, yeah, you know Detect By the way, guys, I know Detect Thoughts. The crown has it. Wasn't sure if you were aware of that. We really did need the crown before we... Took on this quest <laughs> yeah. before we went in to Marengar. So you have to detect thoughts, and we have to somehow find a way to make it audible to non-magicy people. So now we just need a scroll of encode thoughts, right? And we are—we just came from the largest the city, largest in the world. city ever. Uh, turn the boat around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I say, listen, Raftman, if you haven't already like jumped off the boat by hearing us talking about murdering rich people <laughs> turn this boat around and take us back to the city yeah we rain up on the ferries and tell them to turn around <laughs> well wait raft man hasn't charged us yet yeah you haven't actually left on the raft yet oh okay oh, all right awesome all right well see you t- see we'll see you tomorrow yeah. we're going back into the city <laughs> well it's likely to take you quite some time to hunt down any specific magic that you want all right well we'll see you next week then after we spend <laughs> three episodes of this show hunting down a single scroll of a cantrip i was thinking more like rolling a few checks and seeing how many days it takes you and how much it costs all right let's do that <laughs> yeah let me look into this spell i'm interested oh, this is great this is great news pull a memory and idea or a message from your mind Transform it into a tangible string of glowing energy called a thought strand. It is actually the pensive from Harry yeah. Potter. That's hilarious. Yeah, huh. it only lasts for eight hours, so you have to deliver it to someone within that time frame too. Mm-hmm. So we get we get the we get the memory strand, and we have to preserve it and present it within right? eight hours. Yeah. Okay. Realistically, you'd have to bring Felmendar to someone else and then pull his memory out and give it to that person. Yeah, we'd have to capture him and then do it on site. We'd do the extraction mm. in captivity. Which, hey, by the way, once we clear Aslo and frame him, it's not going to be hard for us to reap some sort of reward. What do you mean? Like, if we've brought him to justice through this crazy memory plan we may not have a window to just kill him anyway like he may be turned over to the authorities that be but clearing aslo might be worth more than getting all the money that felmadar may have accrued since he saw him last how so we may have to pick between the two it may be hard to achieve both killing him taking his stuff or clearing aslo's name if we capture him then we can take his stuff anyway even if he's not <laughs> dead <laughs> yeah, but isn't he going to be like, on, like if there's some sort of a trial, isn't he going to be like, yeah, but there are a bunch of thieves. Maybe, but <laughs> <laughs> so thievery is a misdemeanor, Tokus. <laughs> Murder is a felony. I'm saying there may be another way for us to, to, to rank up in our finances that doesn't involve killing him. I mean, even if you do turn him in, he's likely to be put to death anyway because Aslo is going to be put to death. Mm. Right. He's guilty of the same crime. <laughs> yeah. We also need to f- learn a little bit more about how their legal system works. Yeah. Uh, like, who are we supposed to present him to once we do capture him? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah true. Is there, like, true. a magistrate, or, like, a do we go before the local baron? This, this gets really complicated pretty quick, since we want to clear Aslo. Bring him to Lord Grunwald himself, the man whose wife you killed. That's right. Oh. Would he, would he have the authority to remove the bounty? He's the one who put it on him in the first place. Oh. Mm. Yeah. I'm excited to... I don't think we've had a single scroll spell in this whole campaign. Mm-mm. It's true. I don't even know how they work in 5e. Yeah, I, well, I think it's partly because none of us are wizards. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I don't do scroll stuff, even though I'm a third of a wizard. I didn't get that part of it. We've also never uh, recovered a spell scroll in any of our loot. Is that something common you guys will come across in other campaigns? Um, not in common, d- in no. D&D video games, yeah, but not in, uh, not in campaigns usually. 
They're fairly common in published modules and things, but never have been when we've been playing. I mean, that makes sense, because, like, in a published module, it's like they already have an idea of what spells they would want the players to have temporary access to. Mm -hmm, right. Whereas, like, if you're creating it from scratch as a DM, it's hard to be like, hmm, if I give them two charges of Fireball... Yeah. Yeah, the only thing that spell scrolls, for me, were ever good for in, like, a... Like a D and D video game was just co trying to copy them into a wizard spellbook for permanent use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what kinds of checks do we need to make to try and find this scroll? Well, we need to find somebody who knows the spell, right? It looks like Tokus is the only one who could actually use it because it's a wizard spell, and you cast wizard spells. Oh no! Oh. Mm. Is it? It's not in your prohibited school, is it? It is. It's an enchantment. But it's still on your spell list. Oh, that doesn't matter? It's not a prohibited scroll. It's just good. Oh, okay. Right, because it's a scroll. It's not like... I'm not learning this spell. He's just clarifying okay. Eldritch Knights can cast it. Right on. So I can cast it. Mm -hmm. Okay. But in Code Thought says, if you cast this spell while concentrating on a spell from blah, 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 detect thoughts, then you can transform it into a thought strand. But now I have detect thoughts and you have encode thoughts. Oh, hmm. Yeah, how's that going to work? That is a snafu. Eh, that's a problem. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How many points do I need? If we wait until we level up, then I can take one level in wizard <laughs> so that I can learn and code thoughts. <laughs> yeah, t no, no, that, that's a good thought. Uh, Tokus, how many charges would the crown have on your head? Could I borrow the crown to do this? I have a negative charisma. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think on your head the crown would have zero charges. Mm -hmm. Detect thoughts cost two charges. Right. Right. So I need you to cast detect thoughts, and then I need you to put the crown on my head, and we wait for it to turn to me. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Wait, wait, wait. What's modify memory? This also works with modify memory. If you cast a spell while concentrating on a spell ability that allows you to read or manipulate the thoughts of others. Bard, warlock, wizard. I could learn this, but it's a level five... But we found something that's also wizard. Hmm. Both modify memory in this. What is what is detect thoughts? I mean, you could always find a scroll of that too. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I can. I can also learn detect thoughts. It would be a lot more expensive. We're not trying to change his story. He, we, we believe you, Asler, that he did do something. Yeah. So we just need encode thoughts and detect thoughts. Yeah, as long as you're not lying, everything will work perfectly. Mm-hmm. Yes. The other point of consideration from a mechanical uh, perspective is how do we actually capture Felmendar? We defeat him in combat and then heal him. Don't kill him. And do, yeah, exactly. We bring him down to zero and don't, like, massive damage him, and then we tie him up and then heal him so that he doesn't Die. fail all his death saves. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I guess that's interesting to think about is enemies also technically have death saves. Right? Right. Well, it's just you usually shortcut that because nobody's going to res them in most circumstances. That, yeah, that's sort of what I would assume. Up to the DM if he wants to give them death saves or not. Generally, the rule is they die instantly. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Right, but if we're intending to subdue, like to do subdual damage instead of lethal damage, isn't that something we can do? Yeah. Mm. With melee weapons, at least, you can do that. Okay, so this is only a second level spell, Detect Thoughts. You can also get a potion of mind reading or whatever. Mm. So yeah, you're going to search around town for something that allows you to do any of these things. Mm -hmm. Detect Thoughts and Encode Thoughts. I didn't realize there was a potion of mind reading. That could work, right? Is there a potion that would give me Encode Thoughts? Uh, no. No? Okay. It's not really a potion type effect. Gotcha. Okay, so then, those two scrolls. Hazel, you just have to admit that I'm the cooler spellcaster in this case, because <laughs> only I can learn this. I, we, we can talk. We figured it out, right? Okay, encode thoughts for me on a scroll, plus mm -hmm. either the potion of mind reading or something like detect thoughts or modify memory, right? Scroll of detect thoughts, yeah, exactly. That's going to be really expensive and hard to find. Mm -hmm. I think you'd actually need two scrolls of encode thoughts, one to pull it out and one to read it again for someone else. Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> Not to mention, he gets to make checks and saves against detect thoughts. Not if we... Um, there's got to be some status effect we can put on him to make him fail the check. You can hex him. For wisdom. Hex him for wisdom? Yeah. That would give him disadvantage. I'm just trying to think of a status effect that would guarantee success. Hex only affects checks, not saves. Hex affects checks, not uh, saves. Yeah, yeah, hex affects uh, checks. Okay. We can make it so that he's vulnerable on saves, though. I'm trying to think of what the status is. 
unconscious. Maybe. Like, his brain is still alive when he's knocked out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Can you cast Detect Thoughts on a creature? Okay, so that all depends on what the DM rules. Can we bring him to zero hit points, knock him out, then Detect Thoughts on him? Oh, yeah, but remember, we have to transport him first. So we'd have to bring him to zero hit points, tie him up, <laughs> heal him up so he's awake, transport him to the Lord, then knock him out again, <laughs> <laughs> then detect his thoughts, encode his thoughts, and then prove to the Lord that he's guilty. I know this would be really expensive, but what would be better than a bunch of scrolls to detect thoughts? We might as well just try to find an item that gives the cantrip. Think about my ring of flight, right? Ring of, ring of jump, I mean. I think of it as flight because I jump really far. But yeah, the ring of <laughs> jump is... Like, what about, like, maybe trying to find a wand of encode thoughts? It's very Harry Potter-ish at that point. <laughs> the wand that does yeah, it. that's true. Uh, yeah. Maybe I can come up with some other magic item. It is a cantrip, after all. Yeah. All right, so the long and the short of it is that we are going to scour the city of Raystergon for items, scrolls, anything that can cast one or both of these two spells. Or anything similar to them. Mm-hmm. Right. Any way of stealing his thoughts. Exactly. Yes. There's another option that doesn't involve any of this. It involves saving throws, but the crown also gives suggestion as a spell, which can be a sentence. Mm. Oh, I suggest you confess. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> well, how many charges? Two charges. Ah, uh, it's a second level. Two? Oh, perfect. That's even easier. We don't even have to mess with any <laughs> of this stuff. Let's get on the ferry and get going. <laughs> I suggest that you confess to the murder of Lady... What's her name? But how do we make him weak to the check? Or fail the check? Mm. How do we make him fail the wisdom saving throw? I do not know. I would have to use meta information that Shaba does not know <laughs> in order to determine that. I'm just thinking, because like, that's, that's something that Eldritch Knights are able to do later down the line. I have the ability to make targets weak to my spells checks. Mm. The charges recharge at dawn each day, so if it fails the first day, then we do it again the next day. Well, it would just stink for you to fail that when we've brought him to court, and yeah. you need your name cleared kind of in that moment, or they're going to take you away. Right. So it's like, we kind of need him to fail the check when we do the thing, the yeah. showdown. But again, if we have to, we can just do it again the next day and then the next day so you want to keep running away from the authorities every time we try to clear your name <laughs> uh, I don't have to reveal my identity until he tells the truth about what happened or I can learn zone of truth it's a bard spell uh, bards can learn it so you mean you can cast it I can cast it if we find a uh, scroll too right Dane yeah if it's a level you can cast Yep, second level. On a failed save, a creature can't speak a deliberate lie while in the radius. But he could also just not speak, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's true, too. Oh, all we have to do is uh, wait till Tokus becomes a level 10 Eldritch Knight. Yes. Oh, there you, you go. get Eldritch Strike, and you can learn how to make your weapon strikes undercut a creature's resistance to your spells. <laughs> your spells. <laughs> right. And this is a spell coming from mm. Brian. Yep. Uh, well, either way, zooming out here. I think we have a few paths that we can go by. We can set this as the plan. So we're scouring the city for some combination that's going to collect his thoughts and or his words and allow Lord Grunwald to know them. Yeah. I, there's got to be a condition that allows this to be stronger. And yeah, there's not a whole lot that will make your opponents get disadvantage on their saving throws. Not a whole lot that we have access to anyway. I found it. I found it. I looked through the whole compendium of... D&D 5th edition conditions. I think exhaustion is the way... You just have to tire them out, and then you do it. Uh, Ah, yeah, we keep them awake. There you go. Can NPCs experience exhaustion like players do, or... Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Alright, so we just, like, keep them up all night. Don't let them sleep. For three days. (laughs) We'll take shifts. Easy. Easy. We have a plan. Foolproof. Yeah. Can't fail. That's how D&D works, right? You make the perfect plan, and then (laughs) nothing can go wrong. Yep. Yep. Three levels of exhaustion is all we need. <laughs> Are we also going to be tired? <laughs> no, we'll take shifts. Yeah. We just, like, tickle him. Like, you can't go to sleep. There's four of us and only one of him. As soon as he starts nodding off, we slap him. And we just do that for three <laughs> straight days. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that would work. We figured it out. <laughs> and even then, it's disadvantage. He could still succeed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, we have our plan. 
If we use suggestion, is there a way that we can pose the question without it seeming like we are coercing him into confessing to a crime that he didn't actually commit? Uh, the suggestion would be, tell us the truth about what happened on that day. Tell us the truth about how Lady Grunwald died. died. Yes, exactly. Well, but I don't know if that's the right question, because he could just say, yeah, a knife went through her heart. Factually, that's what happened. Mm. Like, we, he, he needs to confess. Tell us the truth about how you were involved with Lady Grunwald's death. Tell us the truth about who killed Lady Grunwald. Well, that was Aslo, because he's the one that threw the knife. <laughs> well, no, I, I was going to say, like, yeah, like, we need to think of a clever way to use suggestion. You're right. We may need these other spells, because it's like... So that's why it's, it's tell us the truth about how you were involved with Lady Grunwald's death. What would he say? So he would tell the truth cool. about how he cast a spell that mind-controlled me, or whatever it was he did. I don't actually know. <laughs> well, Thelmadar is clever. We may actually want the... I would be curious to find out how expensive this through-the-back way would be. Yeah, the scrolls. Yeah, I mean, it could be useful in our adventure anyway. Yeah, I'm open for, for that. Y even if we don't have to use it here. Like, we could we could lead with suggestion because it's free, and right. then if he finds a loophole or something goes wrong, we spend the magical items we bought to force. Yeah. Yeah. So, one scroll of detect thoughts, two scroll of encode thoughts. Another thing is that suggestion has an eight-hour duration, I believe. Yeah, eight hours. Mm. And you can set it to be a condition. So you could be like, once we go in to see the people, tell them the truth. Mm. So you could set it up, ensure that it succeeds, and then bring him in to see Oh, uh, yeah, people. true. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> so yeah. you're suggesting... I mean, this is all under the pretense that we've successfully defeated Felmondar and captured him successfully and not accidentally <laughs> lost to him or killed him. Yeah, sure. And we're able to restrain him and ideally give him at all least, that stuff yeah yep. third level exhaustion but the same thing is true of all of our quests if we fail then we have not succeeded yes <laughs> yeah i mean you can, you can just cast suggestion on him and see what he's res his responses are to the question yeah exactly until we get the desired answer so let's get the scrolls and we'll use that as a backup yeah i think what jay was saying was important you were saying this might seem like coercion like what if somebody at the trial detects that we're using magic on felmandar right like are we coercing Felmandar to give an answer or does it look like we're coercing him to give an answer well we can we can try to explain that to Lord Grunwald before we go through with it we are going to use magic on Felmandar because we don't think he'll tell the truth right but, but all we're doing is getting him to tell the truth yeah forcing him to tell the truth Right, yeah, no one in their right mind would confess to murder. But how well does he trust magic? Like, we don't know anything about the guy. Sure, well, it's a risk we're going to have to take. How well does he trust us? We don't know. We'll have to find out when we get there. Certainly doesn't trust Aslo. Right, yeah, so I'm yeah. saying, I think, I think, Jay, you brought another wrinkle into this that I didn't think about, which was, are they just, are they assuming that that's what's happening? We're essentially giving him truth serum? And that's good enough? I, I mean, yeah. yeah. Or is this coercion? Or maybe we don't take him to Lord Grunwald and we take him to another high-ranking... Authority. Authority who has a more neutral viewpoint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That works, too. There's a lot to this. It, like, the, fa the fact that we want to clear your name instead of just get revenge is huge. <laughs> so... Are you still looking for the scrolls and everything, or are you just going to go with suggestion? Yeah, we're looking for the scrolls as a backup. Backup plan, yep. So the three of you set off in search of magic in the city, hopefully finding someone who will be able to sell you what it is you need to complete your quest. Mm -hmm.